the bridge by gate at least. They drive into town in big cars and living furnished rooms and drink whiskey with beer chaser and chase women they will soon forget. They linger only a little while, only until they have built the bridge. Then they are off again to another town, another bridge, linking everything but their lives. They possess none of the foundation of their bridges. They are part circus, part gypsy, graceful in the air, restless on the ground. It is as if the wide open road below lacks for them the clear direction of an 8-inch beam stretching across the sky 600 feet above the sea. When there are no bridges to be built, they build skyscrapers, or highways, or power dam, or anything that promises a challenge and overtime. They'll go anywhere, will drive a thousand miles all day and night to be part of a new building boom. They found Boomtown irresistible. That's why they are called the Boomers. In appearance, Boomers usually are big men, or if not always big, always strong, and their skin is ruddy from all the sun and wind. Some who hit rivets have char complexion. Some who drive rivets are hard of hearing. Some who catch rivets in small metal cones have blister and body burns making it miss. Some who do welding see flashes at night while they sleep. Those who connect steel have deep scars along their shins from climbing columns. Many boomers have mangled hands and fingers sliced off by the slipped steel. Most have taken falls and broken a limb or two. All have seen death. Stray women are drawn to them, like them because they have money and no wives within miles. They like them well enough to have floated the Bordello boat beneath one bridge near St. Louis and to have used upturned hard hats for flower pots in the red light district of Paducah. On weekends, some boomer drive hundreds of miles with their families, are tender and tolerant, and will deny to the heaven any suggestion that they raise hell on the job. Except the little whisper, half proud, half ashamed, fearful the wives will hear and that any semblance of marital stability will be shattered. Like most men, the boomer wanted Bowie. Occasionally, his family will follow him, living in small hotel or trailer carts, but it's no life for a wife and child. The Moore and child might live in 40 states and attend a dozen high school before he graduates, if he graduates. And so the father swears he wants no boomer for a son, he usually gets one. He gets one possibly because he really wanted one and maybe this is why boomers brag so much at home on weekends, creating a wondrous world with whiskey words, a world no son can resist because this world seems to have everything. Adventure, big car, big money, and gambling on rainy days when the bridge is slippery, and booming around the country with Indians who are sure footed as spiders, with Newfoundlanders as shifty at the sea they come from, with roaming rebel riveters escaping the poverty of the small southern towns, all of them building something big and permanent, something that can be revisited years later and pointed to and settled. See that bridge over there, son? Well, one day when I was younger, I drove 1,200 rivets into that goddamn thing.